Now let's look at a gray code counter. And let's build a two-bit gray code up counter, meaning that it'll only count up. Now recall what a gray code counter is. It's one in which, as you traverse the states, only one bit ever changes. So what we're going to do is go 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, and then repeat. Okay? And a gray code counter, it's, it's a neat example because it is a counter because the states traverse linearly. But this is going to be one of the first times where we have to be careful when we do our logic synthesis because the values in our state transition table, the inputs to our next state logic and output logic are not going to be in a perfect binary count. So it's just something to be aware of. Okay, so let's take a look at how we'd start this. We are going to follow the same design process that we've used on other counters. But let's take a look at the word description here. We kind of already went through the word description. But more importantly, let's look at the block diagram. It's going to be, we're going to have an output, and let's call it gray, and for gray code. And it's two bits wide, and there's no inputs, because it's just going to count up. Right, so that's gray. Now let's look at the state diagram for this. And the state diagram is going to be pretty simple. We are going to just have four states, and let's name them something pretty descriptive. Let's name it uh, GC for gray code, and we'll go GC0, GC1, GC2, GC3. And what we'll do is we'll have each state produce an output. So we'll just have four states representing the four count values, and then within each state, we'll say gray is 0, 0 here, gray is 0, 1 here, gray is 1, 1 here, gray is 1, 0 here, and then we'll do our transitions. We'll just always go clockwise around there. So it's a pretty state a pretty straightforward state diagram, but it's going to be important when we do our, our state encodes that we want to match the outputs and the state codes for each state so that we can use or we can minimize our output logic. So if we popped our, if we did our uh, state transition table, the very simple one is nothing more than this. We just put current state, next state, list how this thing traverses. But now it's time to start doing synthesis. So we're going to take that table and expand it and insert into it the state variables. So now here's what we did. Okay, so here's, here's how we got to our final state transition table. And this is, we're doing the state memory synthesis. So when I do the state memory synthesis, I first assign the state codes. Now look what I'm going to do. GC0 is 00, GC1 is 01, GC2 is 11, GC3 is 10. That matches the outputs. Okay, notice that this is not a binary pattern. This would be encoding the states in gray code. And then when we go to do our outputs, we are going to have our outputs match this current state. And that's intentional because we're doing state encoded outputs. So when I come in here, I'm going to name my state variables q1 cur and q0 cur again. q1 next and q0 next are the names of my next state variables. And I put in these things. So I put 00, 0 is gc0, 0, 01 is gc1, 11 is gc2 and 10 is GC3, and I pop them in over here for the next state, matching these next state codes. And then look at the outputs compared to the current state. It's 00 and 00, and then it's 01 and 01, 11 is 11, and then 10 and 10. So my outputs do match the current state, so they are state encoded outputs, and that's going to allow my output logic synthesis to be very simple. However, we now go to synthesize the next state logic. Oh, by the way, how many D flip-flops do we need? We need two. You always need one D flip-flop for every bit in the state code. So we still need two bits. I go to synthesize my next state logic. And I need to build a circuit for Q1 next and Q0 next. But what are the inputs? Well, the inputs are going to be nothing more than Q1 cur and Q0 cur. So I'm going to put these into a two input K map and see if, see if I can minimize some logic. We can come up with a logic expression for Q1 next, and then I'll do the same thing for Q0 next. Here's where it's important. Here's where this is something to be careful of. If I looked at this, I'd go 0, 1, 1, 0. Oh, I recognize that. That's an exclusive OR gate. Well, it's not an exclusive OR gate. That's an exclusive OR gate if the inputs had been 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and, I, and my outputs were 0, 1, 1, 0. Notice that these had to be in a binary count. This is where you got to just be a little careful. These input codes are not in a binary count fashion. They're 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So when you go into the K-map, you got to be careful, or when you do anything, when you derive any, any type of logic here, you just got to be careful that the input codes are listed in this table, not in a binary count. So what does it look like? Let's take a look at what you would do when you go to uh, synthesize this. So 
let's go ahead and look at let's go ahead and look at the K map. So I come along and I have this. So I'm going to have for Q1 next, I popped in here, it was like this. 0, 1, 0, 1 was the actual values that I had. So I put them in the K map and I was able to minimize something there. So that was nice. I was able to get that Q1 next is Q0 cur. And then I did Q0 next and I was able to circle here. So that was cool too because I was able to get Q0 next is equal to Q1 cur not. So it actually got minimized my logic a little bit. And now what I want to do is do the output logic. Well, guess what? I chose state encoded outputs, so that means my outputs were simply the current state. So they're just simply wires because they matched. And if I wanted to, to prove that to myself, I'd go back to this table and I'd say, well, I want to produce this output. I want to produce an output for gray bit 1, 0, 0, 1, zero, 1. Well, that's what Q and cur is. When Q and cur is a 0, the output's a 0. When it's a 0, the output's a 0. When it's a 1, the output's a 1. When it's a 1, the output is 1. So they match. So I don't even need to go into a K map. I just notice that by inspection. Okay. So that's gray. That's my output logic synthesis. And now I go to my final logic diagram. My, neck, my state memory is 2D flip-flops, like we said. But not just 2D flip-flops. 2D flip-flops where I assigned which variable or which bit they're going to represent. So this is Q1 next. Q1 current is on this D flip-flop and then Q0 next and Q0 cur on this default flop. The next state logic is pretty simple for this counter. Notice that Q1, Q0 cur can come directly from this default flop, and then Q1 cur not can come from the inverted output of this one. So you can actually pull this off with just wires. Output logic, nothing more than wires directly to the current state. So I just wire them to Q1 cur and Q0 cur, and I'm done. So it's a very simple process. So that was a two-bit gray code up counter.